All right, guys, welcome to another video. And yet again, we are talking about Poco X3 Pro. Why you and Bhima, a new ROM is on the horizon. That is Pixel OS. This is the official build based on Android 12, and we are using it since yesterday. Now, a lot of things are interesting over here. The ROM is smooth, and this is a complete review. So, before we get into the details, well, I haven't wished you guys exactly. So, a happy new year. May this new year bring you prosperity, happiness, and all your wishes come true, especially with good health in this pandemic era. Now, before we get into the details, if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit that notification bell icon because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this. If you think the hard work is worth the effort, well, please click on the join button and support the channel. Now, without further ado, hello, awesome people. Welcome to Phone Ops. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. So let's see what we have here. We have Pixel OS official. The maintainer is Hast Frim. I hope I pronounced that right. Device is a Poco X3 Pro. It works on both YU and Bima. Android version is 12. This build has been released on the 2nd of January 2022. Now you have donation links over here. This is an initial Android 12 release, December security patch. This is the complete change log. Fully rebased on Android 12, this is this. It's a long change log and it is not specific to this particular device. So you can pause the video and you can have a look at it. Now let's go to the main screen. And the first thing that we will talk about is the smoothness and the app icon animations. Now this ROM, as far as the animations are concerned, you know, it sits in a very, very sweet spot wherein you are not very relaxed, not very fast, but you are pleasing to the eye is what I would call it. The way this bounces around and goes back in is really, really neat. To the left, of course, you have Google Feed, which works absolutely fine. No problem, no stutter, no jitter whatsoever. Everything is working as expected. And even when you're scrolling, if you go to the home screen, you will notice that the experience is equally smooth. Now, if you swipe from the top to bottom, you do have a you know dark accent color, which I find a little disappointing because uh, we are using the light theme mode over here. And if we want something dark, you know, we could have used a dark wallpaper. So let's see here. Let's uh, maybe go to curated culture and let's select this wallpaper. Okay, setting this one. Right, so it still stays dark. Monet UI is doing a great job. It works absolutely fine, no problem whatsoever. But the background of the quick tiles is black and that's a little disappointing. That's okay, not a big deal though. If you press and hold over here, you will go to home settings, which takes you to the Pixel Launcher, which does have these features like at a glance, add app icons to home screen, swipe to access Google app, overview suggestions, suggestions, search your phone, and then you have a few other options here and there. Now, apart from this, you do have access to your beautiful Android 12 widgets, which are working absolutely fine, no problem whatsoever. Apart from this, you have wallpaper and style, which gives you access to different accent colors and they work like a charm. You do have themed icons beta, which is there and it works absolutely fine. So those things are taken care of. Now, if we talk about the quick tiles over here, you do get very, very few tiles. But if you go to the edit menu, you will see that you do have a few options. Now, remember the name of this ROM is Pixel OS. So this is very much in sync with Pixel experience. It doesn't give you a hell lot of customization, but then it gets the job done with, you know, good smoothness and decent performance and stuff like that. You do have your privacy access tiles though, and a few other options are present as well. Now, there is something that puts me off. I most of the time fail to find the screen recorder shortcut. Hope I'm not wrong this time. Yeah, there you go, it is there. So yeah, the screen recording is present and you do have the option of recording internal and external audio, show touches on the screen, show stop dot long press to move it, lower quality for smaller file size. The moment you click on the start button, you do get a timer and the screen recording starts with a notification over here. Now, the good thing here is yeah, finally from Android 12 ROMs, the stutter is almost gone. The reason I say almost is because it's still there. I don't know how much it will affect your gaming performance, but yeah, you can live with this screen recorder. Let's go ahead and stop the recording here. Okay, and let's increase the audio real quick. Let's play this. Oh, so the audio bug is also gone and uh, the smoothness in the recording is top notch. So you can actually use this to, you know, record your gameplay and stuff. And that's really, really neat. So that's nice. 
Now, if you go to the multitasking menu, you will see that it's really, really fluid, fluid, really, really smooth. You do have the screenshot option. You do have the select option. All these things are working fine. You have split screen and all the other options present over here, which are absolutely okay. No problem whatsoever. At the bottom, you do have the Google search bar with you know, the assistant shortcuts. Yes, they are present and they are working fine. Now talking about the camera application, you do get Google Camera Go, which is a good thing because this is a Gcam alternative. Not exactly, but it gives you some control over your photography. It gives you better quality at least. So yeah, Gcam Go is there and it works absolutely fine. Now let's actually go to settings here and let's go to about and let's go to the android version 12 december security patch it comes with the arrow kernel and how good or bad the performance is we will see that in the benchmark numbers now you will ask me what is the customization that you have over here so if you go to network and internet everything is android 12 so apps notifications battery you do have adaptive preferences over here but you don't really have thermal profiles so let's quickly talk about the battery usage over here now, as you can see over here, we have 34 minutes of screen on time and uh, we've been on battery for 24 hours. We are still at 70%. So the battery usage is pretty decent. Under hard, you know, power usage as well, you will get decent battery backup. Now, if you go to display, you do have the screen refresh rate op option. I've always set it to 120 hertz, which is a good thing. You have adaptive brightness, screen timeout, lock screen and all those options which are present, double tap to lock screen, wake screen for notifications. So these basic amount of customizations are present in Pixel OS and they are working fine, right? Now in, in security, you do have fingerprint, you still don't have face unlock. If you go to the option of apps over here, you will see that it does have the gaming dashboard. A feature that I have been complaining about in a lot of custom ROMs is there in this particular ROM. It works fine, so nothing to worry there. Game dashboard is present. Although I do miss the 180 Hz touch sampling rate. I do miss the thermal profiles and stuff like that. Now, under sound and vibration, if you scroll to the bottom, you do have clear speaker. You have MI sound enhancer with enable hi-fi option present. And apart from this, last but not the least, if you go to system, you do have live translate over here because this is Android 12. You do have gestures in which you do have a bunch of options. Toggle torch when screen is off, swipe to screenshot. So let's see here. Uh, let's go to this menu. Capture more. So you do have the expanded screenshot which is present and it works absolutely fine. Now going back to system and going back to gestures over here. You do have tap to sleep and advanced restart as well. Now in the quick tiles, as I said, you do have the advanced restart menu over here. You have settings, shortcut and things like those. So all in all, Pixel OS is doing a great job, but what about the essentials? What about say safety net? So let's go ahead and check that real quick. Safety net passes by default. Google Play Store certification is present. Widevine L1 is present. So you don't have any issues with your you know, Amazon Prime HD content. Now let's go ahead and talk about the performance numbers because hey, most of you are here for the performance numbers. So let's say we go to library, we go to screen shots, not screen recording. 79% throttling with 179, 890 GIPS and the maximum score was 28. So not a great throttle score. Now, if you talk about Geekbench numbers over here, the similar story continues because I ran, you know, this one over here, 753 single core and 2488 multi core. And if we talk about N22 benchmark, let's see what numbers we have here at N22 benchmark. 516,363. So for hardcore performance, this ROM is not doing a great job. Pixel OS is very, very smooth. It boots fine. It doesn't have any bugs. You can use it as a daily driver and it is a pretty, pretty decent ROM. But the performance, well, this is the initial release and later with time, things will improve. If you ask me, the charging speeds are good, the battery backup is decent, the ROM is very, very smooth, you can play games for ca casual gaming and stuff. It's a decent ROM, you can give it a try and nothing new that it brings to the table. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about Pixel OS for the Poco X3 Pro. Until the next one, this is Kalash, signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling, take care, goodbye.